On to Tanzania now. The central bank there has announced new rules that will effectively force banks to hold a lot more capital in order to withstand future potential financial shocks. Now, this comes in the wake of a shop rise in non-performing loans in the East African country. Banks and financial institutions will now be required to maintain a capital conservation buffer of 2.5% of risk-weighted assets and of balance sheet items as well. Let's dig a little deep into the details of these new capital requirements. Dan Ashby joins us now live from Dar es Salaam with a lot more details on this story. Um, Dan, let's step back a bit. Lending in Tanzania pretty much collapsed uh, last year from 26.8% uh, in 2015 to barely 2.5% last year. What happened? Why did the lending just evaporate? Yes, a huge collapse. Banks are worried about uh, non-performing loans, as you say. They are loans where for 90 days people or businesses have not paid back, an indicator perhaps that the loan is about to default altogether. At the moment in Tanzania, those non-performing loans are up to more than 10% of gross loans across the whole country as of April 2017. So banks are getting a little bit nervous, more wary about lending to businesses, becoming more vigilant. There's also generally less liquidity in the, in the system, so they're becoming much more stringent. Uh, agriculture, construction, transport, communication, they've all seen non-performing loans. They're rising fairly steeply. With regard to those specific sectors, why are non-performing loans rising so fast? Agriculture has always been seen as a risky investment in some ways. Of course, you can get both supply and demand issues. On the one hand, productivity can go up and down. And then, of course, you have commodity prices. And Tanzania has had a particularly tough year. You've had uh, droughts across the country, which has affected crops, uh, and also problems with exports. We've learned from the Bank of Tanzania that exports are down in sisal, tea, tobacco and clothes. They are key exports here in Tanzania. Uh, as for construction, there was somewhat of an expected boom a couple of years ago where many buildings, homes, offices went up, expecting Tanzania to develop its oil and gas sector. Uh, simply, not as many people have arrived and, and many are leaving, so there are empty offices, empty buildings, uh, and people are, businesses are going bust and people are losing money, so banks are much more wary now about loaning to the construction sector as well. Indeed. One last question for you, Dan. Uh, banks, of course, now have to raise a lot more capital, 2.5% of risk-weighted assets and off-balance sheet items. Do all banks across the board have to raise more capital in the open market, or are some of them already holding capital well in excess of that 2.5% requirement? Yes, capital is a concern at the moment. The banks are trying to bring in uh, those guidelines that came in after the 2008 financial crash, but already we've had some problems in Tanzania. Three banks have had their licenses removed because of capital problems, and there's particular pressure on small banks. I spoke to one analyst, though, and he says that capital structure remains a concern across the spectrum. You would expect, though, those bigger banks to be fairly well covered. Uh, but in that sector, uh, they are looking at capital. They're looking at changing the rules. At the moment, to start up a small bank, uh, you need 5 billion Tanzanian shillings. They're looking at changing that to 15 billion. They're hoping that will make banks more resilient uh, and things better in the years to come. Indeed, it should uh, be a pretty interesting season in Tanzania's banking sector. Thank you for that. That was Dan Ashby, of course, live in Dar es Salaam. It's